What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in again this week. Now, in the last several weeks, I've actually had multiple friends who have ended up in copyright-related issues with the audio that they have created. And while I'm not going to be diving into their situations, that's not my story to tell, it is the inspiration for why I am creating this video. How to create a visual watermark on an audio file. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guide Discord server, there will be a link in the description below. With that being said, let's get started. So before we dive into creating a watermark for our audio, we first need to understand what a watermark is. Now the watermark was created back in the late 13th century where artists would use a wet piece of paper to kind of help create unique shadows and highlights in their art to help identify that that was original to that specific artist. Moving into the digital age, you know, if you've ever looked at anything on Shutterstock, I'm sure you've seen watermarks, looks very similar to this. And it's just a light branding across an image to help prevent people from stealing those images. Now, watermarks isn't something new in the audio industry, uh, especially if you've heard literally anything created by DJ Khaled. But what we're going to be doing today is just a little more subtle. So what we're going to be using to create our audio watermark is this image to audio spectrogram player. And what it's going to do is it's going to take an image that we're going to create here in just a moment, and it's going to create an audio file from it. If you're using the Chrome browser, this does have a browser extension, but I will leave a link to this website in the description below. So to create our watermark, we're first going to jump into Photoshop and you can do this with any image creating software that you have. I have found that it works best with a 1200 by 1200 file. So we're going to go ahead and create that. So once we've got our canvas here, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to completely fill the background in with the color black. And the reason that we're going to do that is because when you're converting an image to audio, black is completely silent with then white being full volume. So you can create whatever image you want as your watermark. I'm just simply going to use plain black with white text on it. So now I've got the image created that I want to use as my watermark. And I do recommend going completely top to bottom with your watermark. And I'll show you why here in just a moment. But I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then we're going to jump back over to the website that I had just showed you to create the initial audio file. So once we're back over on this page, uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change some of the default settings here. Uh, so for length, uh, this goes up to nine and that's exactly where I'm going to put it. And density, I'm going to bring this all the way down to one so that we get the sharpest watermark image possible. So now we're going to go ahead and choose a file and load in our watermark. And so I'm just going to go ahead and grab this image, open it up. And at the bottom here, you're going to see a preview of what you want, and you can select a certain part of it. I personally recommend just creating from full image, and it's going to take a little bit of time. It doesn't take very long, and we're going to go ahead and get an audio file for our watermark. Now it has finished, and so if I go ahead and hit play on this, So you can see and hear that, that we have this audio watermark. I'm gonna go ahead and download this audio file. And from here, um, you can use any DAW that you want because Adobe Audition has a kind of spectrogram view. I am gonna go ahead and jump over into Adobe Audition. All right, so we've got our watermark open here in Adobe Audition and we can clearly see it in the spectrogram mode. And if we hit play, we can hear it as well. 
So with this particular watermark, the issue is that we can hear it and we don't want to be able to hear it. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this and I'm gonna drop the dB on this by 50. So if we look at our waveform, it's almost invisible. It almost looks like a zero crossing line. And if we look here at our actual spectrogram, you can still see it a little bit. So if I hit play on this, you can see that the, the audio meter is moving because there is technically signal there. But unless you've got absolutely phenomenal hearing, you're not gonna hear this file. Now, if you're wondering why it looks like it's smeared across the page once it gets to the bottom, it's actually because we are currently looking at this in a logarithmic mode. Uh, if we switch to full linear, you will see that it evens everything out. And logarithmic is usually how audio meters are done, but you know you can change that view. That way you can see it correctly. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to put this into a multi-session and we're gonna mix it with an actual audio file. So I've got two different drones here that I had created for my 50 cinematic audio drones. And the first one that I'm gonna drag in is this Alien Buzz drone. And I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out so that we can see that full file. And what I'm gonna do is I've got my watermark here. I'm just going to copy it, duplicate it, um, place it wherever you want, uh, so long as that it extends the full length of that file. So now that we've got that duplicated out, what I'm going to do is go ahead and mix this down to a new file. And because we've still got our spectrogram view open, uh, you can actually see now that we have that audio file and we still have that watermark up in the upper frequencies, it does get masked out in these lower frequencies. As I mentioned, this is not a foolproof thing. Watermarks can unfortunately be defeated. But if we were to go ahead and play this, because remember we had originally dropped that watermark down by 50 decibels, if I go ahead and play this, you're not going to be able to tell that that watermark is in there. And so if you were to listen to the original file, there's a 99.9% .9 chance you're not going to be able to tell a difference. Now I'm sure you're probably wondering, well, okay, the file that you're currently playing has a lot of low end and doesn't really have that much high end frequency. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go back to our session here. And I'm gonna get rid of that alien drone buzz. And I'm gonna bring in this ethereal heavenly drone. So you can hear now we're into those much higher frequencies. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this down now. And even in the spectrogram, you can see that we've got some harmonic frequencies that are hitting, looks like it's in the 10 to 12K range, but yet still above that, all the way up to 20K, you can still see that watermark. So I'm sure some of you are still going, yeah, but what if I hit this with a low pass filter? What happens then? So let's go ahead and do exactly that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select our entire clip and I'm just gonna go ahead and grab just a regular 10 band EQ and we're going to do a quick low pass filter and apply it. Now we can see that that was a pretty harsh low pass filter. I mean, it looks like it took everything from 1K and above and just chopped it off. Which is pretty noticeable in our audio file now because everything from 1K to that 10, 11K is gone, but there's still something interesting that happens, and it's because of tonal harmonics. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here. 
a little bit. And I am going to grab everything from 20K. We can go ahead and really, honestly, that's enough. And so even though we essentially brick walled everything past 1K, because we had those frequencies below the 1K mark, we grab this and just start cranking the volume up. You're gonna see something really cool happen. So you can see by my selection, we're in the 15 to 20K range. And now, there's my watermark. It's still there. Even though, if I go ahead and zoom back out, we've got what was left down here. You can zoom in and still find that watermark. Now, if I knew that watermark was there, I still could come in here and I could absolutely destroy that watermark if I really, really wanted to and if I was trying to be malicious. But chances are, if somebody is stealing your work, they're not gonna be checking this. Most of the time they're gonna be checking for things like metadata, but nine times out of 10, they're not going to be looking for a visual watermark such as this. And even if they do, like with what I just did with the low pass filter, you're not really gonna see it. It's not until you actually select that and just completely ramp up the volume that you're gonna see that pop back out. So that is gonna wrap things up for this week's video. Hopefully this was something that you found informative. Now, I am not a lawyer. I can't give you advice on your copyright laws or copyright related issues. But what I can do is offer you things such as this as a means to add at least another layer of protection as far as your audio files go. If you have any questions or there's anything that you'd like to see me cover on this channel, make sure you let me know by dropping them in the comments below. Until next time.